So in the spring right now where the weather's kind of back and forth, you know, yesterday, it was pretty stormy. And all winter long it can be like that as well. And it's, it just makes it more challenging when you're looking for whales. But when it comes to the summertime, nice days, we do have an opportunity to look for a few different species of whales. And so I want to bring you in here for just a minute and talk about some of those other amazing animals that we get to look for. So last week we talked all about the gray whales, of course, and those are the most common. And so if you want to watch uh, my lesson about that, you can check out last week's videos. I think it was last Wednesday at 1030. I spent about a half an hour talking about these ones right here, the gray whales. And so be sure to check that one out. That's kind of gray whale 101. But today I want to focus on some of these other really amazing species of whales that we watch for here from Depot Bay. And some of these we've already seen on these live broadcasts. So pretty cool. So let's start with one that everybody knows about or a lot of people get very excited about. And that's these right here. These are called orcas or killer whales is kind of their nickname. And so a lot of people are familiar with what these animals look like. Um, they're found all around the world and they're all orcas. They all look very similar to this, this black skin, white eye patches, white bellies, um, very, very popular whales. They're very, very fun to see, very, very exciting. Uh, if you look at the video from about a month ago when we had those orcas come through Depot Bay, I got really excited. I mean, I've only seen orcas here um, from Depot Bay one or two other times. And the orcas that we saw last month, they came the closest out of any of those groups that I've ever seen here in Depot Bay. So they're very exciting. Um, so they've got this black and white paint job. A full grown orca could be about 30 feet long. Um, that would be a full grown male. The males get a little bit bigger than the female orcas. Um, really, really cool. On the front of their heads, they have kind of a bump and all dolphins, so orcas are the largest of the dolphin family, I should say. Um, still whales, dolphin family. They have this bump on their head. This is called their melon and orcas use echolocation to basically see underwater. So they're emitting sound and they use their melon to kind of focus where that sound is traveling and then they're able to um, gain information from the sound waves bouncing back to them and they can see underwater. And so orcas um, and other dolphins all use their melon to kind of focus that sound energy. Really, really cool. Uh, orcas are a toothed whale. So last week we talked about gray whales and their baleen whales. We're going to talk about other baleen whales. And so orcas have uh, teeth on their upper and lower jaws. Kind of hard to see in my model here. Um, but if you're a seal or a sea lion in the Oregon coast and you see this coming at you, it's a really bad day. Um, and there's a whole bunch of these coming your direction. Here's a model of an orca tooth. This is just a plastic cast of one of those tooth. But they have, oh, we'll say around 40 of these teeth in their mouth. And they're made out of the same stuff as our teeth. It's enamel, so very hard. Um, they do break um, from time to time, but it's not very common. I mean, they're very, very, I mean, that's bigger than my finger, you can see. Oops, maybe. They're very, very big, strong teeth. And you can see here, I've got my big model. This is a plastic model, again, of a juvenile orca. And you can see just rows and rows of these teeth. Um, they're very, very good at capturing their prey. And so orcas, all of them are just pretty much strictly carnivores. They eat meat. And so having nice, big, sharp teeth helps them grab onto their prey. Maybe it's a seal or a sea lion uh, or a baby whale even. And so uh, one of the other cool things, oh, I should mention all toothed whales, so dolphins, orcas, I don't know if you can see it on this model, maybe. 
all toothed whales have just a single blowhole on top of their head. There's just one hole that they breathe in and out of where all baleen whales, where's my gray whale here? All baleen whales, remember we talked about them last week, have two. So there's my, my gray whale, two nostrils, one, two. Orcas, dolphins, other toothed whales, we're gonna talk about one more toothed whale later, it just has one blowhole. That's another kind of fun piece of trivia there about toothed whales versus uh, baleen whales, so pretty cool. Um, other fun facts about orcas, all orcas around the world, they're all matriarchal societies. And so there is a, the eldest female is the boss and it's like no questions asked. Um, she is the keeper of all of the knowledge and like where to go certain times of year for food. She kind of sets the tone for that, that pod or that family of orcas. And so listen to what mom says, kids. Um, there's a pretty famous orca here in uh, our neck of the world one of the pods up in Seattle, or the, the southern resident killer whales, um, her name was Granny, and she was the boss of her pod. Um, and she was, I think, 104, I want to say, 101, 104, somewhere in there. She just passed away a couple years ago, but she was the matriarch of her pod for a very long time. And they have photos of her from the early 1900s, and she passed away just a few years ago. So. That kind of leads me to my next thing about orcas. They live a long time. And so female orcas will actually live longer than the males. Um, they can live on average 80 to 90 years, where the male orcas, maybe they live 50 to 60 years, they think. So pretty cool. 30 feet long, uh, but maybe about 10 tons toothed whales. Very, very cool. So we are expecting to see some orcas somewhere on the central coast over the next month or so. April and May are very common times for us to see a group of orcas called the transient orcas. They're actually who we saw last month. Um, there was a pod of transient orcas that came into Depot Bay and uh, we were able to watch those uh, on that video. So you can go check that one out on our channel if you haven't seen it. I think it was uh, Spring Whale Watch Day 4 so that would be March 24th, I want to say, 25th, somewhere in there. But it's, I titled that video, Orcas in the Bay. You can go watch that. Those are transient orcas, and those orcas um, frequent the Oregon coast April, May, maybe part of June. They're here hunting seals, sea lions, or even uh, smaller whales, other whale species. Um, they will target baby gray whales or calves during this northbound migration. Um, these are kind of all scale models. And so here's our mama gray whale, remember? Here's a full grown orca. So you can see mama gray whale, she's really big. Like an orca probably isn't gonna attack a full size gray whale just because it's, it's dangerous to attack an animal this much bigger than you. Um, but if the orcas can separate this calf from her mother, um, you can see that the calf is much smaller and the orcas, again, they work in that pod, they can hunt these smaller gray whales. And so uh, it might be sad, but it is a, just the normal part of nature. Uh, everybody has families to feed, so sometimes it is baby gray whales. We don't see a lot of that here in Oregon. Uh, it probably does happen, but most of the orca attacks on gray whales happen on the California coast, uh, Monterey Bay is a very common place where orca attacks are um, documented pretty much every year. So, um, Another group of orcas I want to mention is those southern resident killer whales, the SRKWs. If you do watch the video from earlier uh, when we saw the orcas come in, I originally thought that the orcas we saw were a, one of those families, one of those pods. The, and I mistakenly referred to them as the Puget Sound orcas. Um, that, that term is not correct. And so the southern resident killer whales, their name has, has become a little more established as that because they don't stay in Puget Sound. They spend over 50% of their time out along the Pacific coast somewhere. 
Um, they don't just stay in Seattle. Um, a lot of people have seen those orcas in Seattle or Puget Sound or the Salish Sea, Port Angeles. Maybe you were in Vancouver, BC and went on a whale watch tour. Those orcas, they do look for a lot and they're fairly common up there, um, but they do travel out here on our coast as well. So Southern resident killer whales. Those orcas are actually uh, endangered right now. They only eat salmon. And if you live here in the Northwest, you know that our salmon stocks are not doing great right now. And so if the only thing that you eat is not doing great, that impacts you as well. And so these, the Southern resident killer whales, I think there's 77 or 74. There's not very many of them left. And I know that there's uh, legislation and a lot of stuff that's being talked about up there in Washington state to try to help the salmon, which will in turn help these orcas as well. So pretty cool. There's actually one more group of orcas that we could see here. So we have the transients, eat seals and sea lions. The SRKWs eats salmon. And there's a third group of orcas. They look similar to this, black and white. Um, but the third group is called the offshore orcas. And they're about two thirds the size of, the, of the, these other orcas. They're just a little bit smaller. They still look the same. And they eat sharks out there in the open ocean. So the offshore orcas get their name because they live offshore. And so they live way, way out. Um, very rarely would you or me or anybody see them here from shore. But if you're a fisherman or you are out on a ship 30, 40, 50, 100 miles off the Oregon coast, you may run across a pod of those offshore orcas. Scientists are still trying to learn about them. I mean, they're very, very hard to track, of course. They live so far offshore. Um, but they do know, so they've been able to examine some after they have died. They're, they do eat sharks. They have found that um, as that orca ages, their really sharp, pointy shark, uh, teeth actually get ground down. They like get filed down. And it's because if you've ever uh, felt shark skin before, it's super abrasive. It's like sandpaper almost. And so the more and more sharks you eat, even with really strong teeth, it's gonna like dull your teeth throughout your whole life. So pretty crazy. So those are orcas. If you have any questions about them, type them in the chat here and I will uh, respond to those here as soon as I'm done with my little mini program. Um, the next group of whales I want to talk about are these ones right here. These are what we saw last week. These are the humpback whales. And so if you want to check out last week's video, we saw a pod of these swimming by. Now humpback whales, they are just about the same length as orc, uh, excuse me, gray whales. Maybe just a little bit longer. A uh, full grown gray whale can be 45 feet long. Full grown humpback, maybe about 50 feet long. So just a little bit longer. You can see that they're a little bit rounder than our gray whales. They get a little bit heavier. And so maybe 40 tons, maybe 45 tons, 50 tons maybe on a good day. Um, there's about seven to 10,000 of them here in our section of the world that are swimming around out here. Um, most of them will go to Hawaii to breed in the winter time but a certain percentage, maybe 20% or so, do go south to Mexico as well. And they actually go down into the Sea of Cortez there to breed and to give birth. Um, so we do have some that travel north-south along our coast, and that's probably who we saw last week. Some humpback whales that were down in Mexico, and now they're headed back towards Alaska for the summer feeding season. So really cool. Um, orca, uh, the, excuse me, humpbacks, Again, two blowholes on top of their heads. Remember, they're a baleen whale, so they have two. They have these huge bumps all over their face. Um, those are called tubercles. And each one of those bumps is actually, there's a hair at the center of those bumps. Um, lots of hair on their faces, turns into these big tubercles. Uh, they've got two eyes, same place, just right above their jaw, where their jaw enters their skull there. Pretty good size eyes. One of the most 
easily identifiable features on a humpback whale, of course, are these massive pectoral fins. Um, these, we see them slapping them on the water, uh, making a big commotion. Um, humpbacks are pretty flashy. They like to uh, jump out of the water sometimes. We didn't see any of that last week. I was really hoping, but we just they were just spouting. And that's cool too. Um, humpbacks are what we see on TV, like singing and jumping and just being all around awesome. Uh, if you've ever been to Hawaii in January and February, maybe into March a little bit, um, that's where most of the humpbacks go to breed nice warm water over there. I was actually lucky enough to be uh, on Kona, the island of Kona, a few years ago and snorkeling around and uh, was lucky enough to hear one in the water. And so they do sing, it's super loud, and you can hear it in the water if you're snorkeling around. Really, really cool. Um, other identifiable features, they've got this dorsal fin, right? And that's what we were able to use to identify our humpbacks last week. Uh, gray whales, remember, do not have any kind of a dorsal fin. And so even though it's small, it's only about a foot tall, that's what we use to identify humpbacks a lot when they're swimming miles and miles out like those ones were last week. They were probably three and a half miles away, but we were still able to see them. So humpback whale tails, each one of them has a unique uh, pattern. Uh, you can think of it like your fingerprint, right? And so this is how researchers keep track of the humpbacks as they travel up and down our coast, or maybe they're in Alaska or in Hawaii. They're able to take a picture of their tail fluke when they go on a dive. And there's this huge, very, very complete catalog of humpback whale um, sightings. And there's computer algorithms and all that stuff. So you can actually submit a photo of a humpback whale tail it'll crunch it in this database and it'll tell you, oh, that's Steve. He was in Alaska last week or what, you know, whatever the whales uh, identifier is. And so it's really, really cool. I just watched a great video. Thanks, Glenn, for sending me the link. Um, they talked about humpbacks and how that catalog is becoming more and more complete and how accurate it is. And I think they talked about the longest uh, span of time between um, when a whale was like logged in that catalog. There was a whale that was spotted on the East Coast. I think it was uh, spotted in Massachusetts in like the 80s. And then 30 years later, that same whale, another photo was taken of it. And so um, it, sometimes the whales are elusive for a long time, but they're still swimming around out there. Very, very cool. So. Uh, anything else I want to think? Oh, humpbacks do like to stay in pods sometimes. A lot of times, actually. They will work together to capture their prey. If it's krill or herring or anchovies, sometimes they'll form a pod. Um, really good videos on YouTube here where you can go and watch humpback whales feeding together. They do a, a really cool technique called bubble net feeding. Just amazing. They all work together. Um, they all have separate jobs. Really, really cool. I won't go too much into that, but go check out some great videos about the humpback whales here on YouTube, some of the feeding stuff that they do. Fish, krill, I think I got everything I wanted to talk about on humpback whales. So any questions about those ones, type them in that chat right there. I'll see them here in a little bit. Oh, I should show you uh, the baleen from a humpback while I've, got, while I've got you here. So this is a small sample of baleen from a humpback whale. I mean, you can't feel this, but it's probably like 20 pounds. It's really heavy. And so to compare that with our gray whale baleen, here's the gray whale baleen, short, blonde. Here's the, a piece of humpback baleen, really, really, really thick. Um, also frayed on the inside, helps them capture their prey, krill or anchovies. You know, humpback whales just eat, they eat bigger prey, right? And so they need a bigger net. And the stuff that they are chasing can run away faster. So the bigger the net that you have in your mouth, the more chances you're going to be able to catch more food. So pretty cool stuff. Still keratin, just a little bit different color. You can see it here. If I can get the camera to focus on it. 
there we go. You can see all the ridges here too. So scientists can use this to travel back in time. Um, there will be uh, periods that the baleen is growing very quickly uh, in the summertime when they're eating a lot, a lot of, got a lot of energy. And then there's periods where the baleen does not grow as fast. The winter time, um, they're conserving energy, all that kind of good stuff. Pretty cool. Someday, I hope you can come and see me here and you can, you can feel this yourself. You can smell it. Kind of stinky. Uh, let's talk about a couple more species of whales. Make sure there's not one like jumping right now out the windows. Uh, we're good. Um, another whale species that we have here in Oregon, people don't realize, are these ones. These are sperm whales. Uh, you might have read the book Moby Dick, Captain Ahab, all that kind of stuff. Sperm whales are here along the Oregon coast. Um, it's pretty rare to see them from shore. They're usually somewhere off the continental shelf. And so it's, it's rare for us to see them up here on the central coast or the north coast. Uh, maybe a little more common down on the south coast. Uh, there's a, it's deeper, closer to shore down there. Um, but we do have some here and they are swimming around pretty much all the time. Actually this winter, I think it was December, January, I forget exactly. We actually had a juvenile male sperm whale wash up here in the Newport area. And so some scientists were able to come out and examine it. Um, I don't know if I saw the official cause of death that they determined from that animal. But pretty amazing. This was the first sperm whale I had ever seen wash up on shore like this. Um, and it was, again, it was a bachelor male. So sperm whales do form pods also, um, but it's usually, again, kind of a matriarchal society. Um, there's females and young that stay in a pod. But when a male gets to a certain age, um, kind of gets kicked out of the nest, they have to go off and find their own new pod to kind of mix up the genetics all that kind of stuff. So sometimes we do see like little bachelor male pods swimming around out there, but the larger pods are gonna be the females and the young calves and the immature adults, so pretty cool. Sperm whales, again, are a toothed whale. They've got teeth just on their lower jaw, a whole row of them here. Nothing on their upper jaw. Um, Again, they are a toothed whale, so how many blowholes do they have? One or two, one or two. Correct answer is one. And one of the cool things about sperm whales is their uh, nostril, their blowhole, is kind of on uh, the side of their head, like it's over here, and it shoots at a 45 degree angle. And so when they come up and spout, it actually looks weird if you're used to watching uh, humpbacks or gray whales or other, um, most other whale species, the whale spout is vertical, right? It goes straight up and down. But where the sperm whale, it comes out at an angle. So it's kind of like that, like 45 degree angle. Kind of cool. I have spotted them one time from shore and it was a very, very calm day. And I was up at Cape Foulweather where we were a couple weeks ago doing our live broadcast. And so on a very, very calm day from up there, you can see like 25 or 30 miles. And I was up there with some really good binoculars and I spent like an hour just kind of slowly going back and forth along the horizon. And I was able to see a pot of whales, which I am uh, assuming was some sperm whales based on angle of their spouts and how long it was in between their, their spouts and their dives. So sperm whales are one of the deepest diving animals on the whole planet. Um, some estimates they can dive 10,000 feet deep. And so super deep, they can hold their breath for like an hour or longer. It's just insane. If you have some spare time, which I know a lot of us do right now when you go home, um, do some Googling and do some learning about sperm whales. Some of their... Um, anatomical adaptations that they've developed over the last millions of years, it's insane. Like they, they might be, in my mind, the closest to an alien that we have living here on Earth. Some of the stuff that their bodies can do to help them withstand the pressure of diving 10,000 feet deep is just insane. And so do some Googling, 
do some YouTube deep dives on sperm whales. It's just, it's so, they're so cool. They are just amazing. And the fact that we have them right here in Oregon, a lot of people don't realize. Here, let me show you. Here's a, an example of a sperm whale tooth. So again, this is just a plastic model, but you can see it's bigger than my hand. Really, really big. Now, sperm whales aren't out there like attacking other whales and stuff, um, or pirates maybe, but they're actually attacking other sea monsters, giant squid. And so here is an example of one of these giant squid. Now, uh, remember when I told you all my whale models are scale? So here's our gray whale. Here's our sperm whale. Like again, they're about the same size, 40 to 45 feet long. Um, my giant squid is also scale to these whales. This comes from the same collection. And so here is what you're eating if you are a sperm whale. I don't know about that, right? Now this would be like the upper end of how big these giant squid can get but pretty crazy that these animals are attacking something this big under the water. So uh, really, really cool, pretty amazing animals swimming around here on the Oregon coast. Way, way out. Um, places down around Charleston, Coos Bay, like uh, Shore Acres, Cape Arago, you can see out a long way and it's really deep right there. Um, so you never know, maybe you'll get lucky, see some sperm whales. Or if you're a fisherman and you go out there out towards like the rock pile or, or someplace out deep here on the central coast. You could see some sperm whales out there for sure. So pretty cool. Uh, last species I want to talk about, and then we'll get you back out there. These little guys. Look at it. It's so cute. Oh, focus. Uh, this is a model of a bottlenose dolphin. Did you know that we have bottlenose dolphins here in Oregon? Focus, 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 there we go. We do. Uh, more common here in the summertime. They come up here in the summer looking for fish. I have been told that there are bottlenose dolphins here in Oregon. I, um, I didn't really believe it. I mean, I was like, okay, cool. Maybe eventually there will be bottlenose dolphins. A couple years ago, and I might have told this story already, sorry, uh, in a previous stream, but I want to tell it again because it, it just it surprised me so much. So uh, throughout the spring we have school groups come on a, normal, on a normal year and we have school groups come and we do ranger presentations outside on our beautiful patio overlooking the water here, kind of like we're doing. And my program out there is about 15 minutes long. These are kids, their attention span is pretty short. And so it's about a 15 minute program and I ask all these kids to hold their questions until the end so I can do my talk, right? Um, so I start my, my normal boring park ranger talk and right away this kid like wiggling in the back is like, hey, I see you. Hold your question until the end, please. I'll get to you, I promise. And so he's like, he's looking really agitated the whole time. And so finally I get through my whole 15 minute park ranger talk and there he is. Ranger Luke, Ranger Luke. I'm like, okay, hey, what's your question? He's like, hey, do we have dolphins here in Oregon? And I was like, well, technically, maybe, you know, super rare. And he goes, what are those? And right here, right in the water, right behind where I was talking, there was an entire pod of these bottlenose dolphins jumping and tail slapping and doing all the amazing dolphin stuff that you see on TV right there, right in the water behind me. And so I looked at this kid and I was like, hey man, how long have they been out there? And he says, about the whole time you were talking. And so uh, since that kid, I've changed when kids can ask questions. And if, I, I tell them, if you see something amazing, just yell and I'll stop my talk. So pretty cool. Um, we do have bottlenose dolphins here. I know last summer there was some surfers in Newport down by Moolock Beach. It's just north of Yaquina Head. They were out on a morning in June doing some surfing and a pod of these bottlenose dolphins came and swam right through them. So that would be pretty amazing uh, if you ask me. So cool. Well, there was about another half hour talk. 
about some of the other whale species that we see here in Oregon. We talked about orcas, we talked about the humpback whales, talked a little bit about sperm whales, and then the bottlenose dolphins. So lots to see out here in Depot Bay and really all over the Oregon coast. And uh, we're just going to start getting into some of the prime whale watching time. So June, July, August, September um, are my favorite months to come and look for whales here on the Oregon coast. Uh, it's, it can be a lot of fun. And sometimes you get lucky and you got dolphins jumping right here behind you. So uh, share with me in that chat, where have you had a cool whale watching experience uh, if you visited the Oregon coast? Or even if you haven't, um, share with us where a cool whale watching experience you had in that chat box and we can talk about it. So thanks again everybody for tuning in. Let me get you back out here and we'll look for some whales and then I'll jump back on the microphone and answer any questions that have come in. So let's go back over here and I'm going to switch our microphones around again so you'll be able to hear the ocean one more time here. So stay tuned everybody. We'll be right back.